a stimulating liqueur composed of spirits of any kind, sugar, water, and bitters. Hello, Doc Martinez here. Happy New Year's, everybody. This is my first video for 2023. I hope everyone has had a great new celebration and that this year brings many blessings. We're going to start this year simply with a Kiss series old fashioned. When I started my old fashioned rabbit hole journey, it all started with research. I found this amazing book, The Old Fashioned by Robert Simonson. It was the starting point in my old fashioned rabbit hole journey. I had originally planned to follow most of the recipes in this book before starting my own creative journey. I made it through two recipes in the book and somehow quickly went on my own way. This new year, I plan to go back to my original vision and do more recipes from Simonson's book. And in between, still plan to continue on my versions of old fashioned cocktails that are inspired by my life, family, but while sticking to a stimulating liqueur composed of spirits of any kind, sugar, water, and bitters. Now this next old fashioned was supposed to be my third video and it was going to be my third recipe from Simonson's book. But this is now my 43rd different variation on an old fashioned. Today we'll be doing the Prue method number one and number two old fashioned. It's on page 83. Prue during his seemingly short bartending career wrote a second edition of the Bartender's Manual with revised versions complete with new drinks. He made it clear that this volume was a guide to mixing drinks in the first class style only. Cocktail quiz time. Where did Theodore Prue work as a bartender when writing the Bartender's Manual? Hint, it was a windy place. So today we're not just doing one recipe, but two. These are methods number one and number two of an old fashioned offered by Theodore Prue. Ironically, method number one is what people want in an old fashioned were trying to get away from. He used absinthe and multiple pieces of ice instead of one large ice. Now, in the book, there's a little confusion. For method number two on page 83, there is no mention of absinthe in the recipe. However, on page 32, he states, method number two, prepare like the old fashioned number one, with the exception that you use one chunk of ice and leave it in the glass instead of strain it. The absinthe is still in the thing, but he's getting it closer. So maybe Simonson opted not to have the absence in method number two when he adapted the original recipe. If you are liking these videos, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really does help that YouTube algorithm. Let's make crew method number one and number two old fashioned. Method number one ingredients. One teaspoon of sugar, water, Angostura bitters, bar spoon simple syrup, dash of absinthe, lemon pill, two ounces whiskey, two or three pieces of ice. Let's make proof method number one. In a whiskey glass, we're gonna take a teaspoonful of sugar and we're gonna dissolve it with a bar spoon of water. Next, we're gonna add one or two dashes of Angostura bitters and a bar spoonful of simple syrup. Next, we're gonna add a dash of absinthe. Then we're gonna twist the lemon over the mixture and drop the pill in the glass. Now we're gonna add two ounces of whiskey. And add two to three pieces of ice. Then gonna stir until chilled. And now we're gonna strain it into an old fashioned glass. There you have it, Prue method number one. Method number two ingredients, teaspoon of sugar, water, Angostura bitters, simple syrup, lemon peel, two ounce whiskey, one large chunk of ice. Now we're gonna make Prue method number two. It's pretty similar to the first one. So we're gonna take a teaspoon of sugar and we're gonna dissolve it with a bar spoon of water. Next, we're gonna add one or two dashes of Angostura bitters and a bar spoon full of simple syrup. We're gonna add two ounces of whiskey. And instead of adding multiple pieces of ice, we're gonna add one large ice cube. Now we're gonna stir till chilled. I did skip a part. We're supposed to twist the lemon over the drink and drop it in. And there you have it, Prue method number two. Cocktail quiz time. Where did Theodore Prue work as a bartender when writing the bartender's manual? 
answer. He was a bartender at the Grand Chicago Saloon, Chapin and Gore. So here we have it from Simonson's book, Proving Method Number One and Proving Method Number Two. As we are showing while making it, the first one has absence made with some ice poured into another glass. Method number two, no absence. We use one large ice and we serve it in the glass we made it in. So let's see, is there a difference? Method number one. Yeah, you definitely smell that licorice really up front on that nose. It's going for a taste now. Okay, the licorice is pretty heavy in that. You taste it up front, but pretty quickly the whiskey does take over and you have that nice whiskey wash at the end. If you like licorice, you'll really like this drink. If you're not much of a licorice fan, you might not. Now, I'm not much of a licorice fan, but I actually kind of like it. It's actually not bad. I'm going for one more drink. Yeah, still, that licorice up front, whiskey comes through at the end. But overall, it's a pretty good balanced drink. I could drink this. Would this be my first choice? Probably not, but it is a, it is a good mix of an old fashioned. Method number two. Now, this is probably more of a way we see what old fashions nowadays. Large ice in the glass. So let's taste this one. Very interesting. Not as complex that first one. The absence does add a lot of complexity to it. I'm gonna clear my palate real quick. Okay. The interesting thing is it does taste a little bit different. I don't know if it tastes different to me because I had method number one with the absence in it. Or and the other thing I really thought, I thought it was gonna be a lot sweeter using that sugar and the simple syrup. So I thought there was gonna be a lot more sweetness to this. So there is, um, it definitely is not as complex as the first one, but it's still a very good basic old fashioned. Okay, now with that second drink, I'm starting to get those flavors back. I think that, that palate cleanse really did help. I'm starting to taste that whiskey, get the old fashioned with that little bit of bitters in there. So now it's tasting more like a regular old fashioned to me. Weird thing is, out of the two, I had originally said I probably wouldn't choose this first, but if I had both side to side and sit them the way I did, I'd probably want to go back to this one and drink this one first. That's funny because absence is not my favorite, but it does add a little bit of a kick and make it a little bit different. I really do like this one. Both are good. I don't think they're great. I've had some really good old fashions now. I would drink both of them, but it's funny. Never in a million years would I thought I'd choose the one with absence over the regular one. But today, met the number one wins for me. Here's to a new year, and thank you for joining me down this old fashioned rabbit hole. Cheers.